The Great Migrations by Stephen M. Lambert, Ph.D. December 2023 Arduous derives from the Latin ardus, which means high, steep, or difficult. Kilimanjaro, Tanzania Adam named the animals and Moses led the exodus because parting the Red Sea was miracle, but climbing Kili, dream, an audacious idea teetering between redemptive vision and fool's escapade. It begins with a climb through tropical forest to big tree camp across the heather and moorland of broad Shira Plateau, over Moor Valley, up to Lava Tower, and down to our fourth camp, on the fifth day scaling Barranco Wall at sunrise, lunching midday at Karanga Huts with clouds far below, before pushing to Burafu, which means ice in Swahili, the rocky base camp at 15,330 feet. Moses had dispatched his team of 17 Kili fighters ahead to pitch tents and prepare dinner. But when we arrive at sunset with slow, thick bodies covered in dust and heavy with exhaustion, where the smallest task summons great effort, winds lash the tents and test the ropes, forcing a scramble for balaclavas and parkas, before collapsing finally onto sleeping bags. Suddenly, commotion, when Moses orders his team to relocate camp, to another side of the ridge, protected from winds. I pull my headlamp from the rucksack, wobble between large rocks, and marvel how blue without sin touches fire and blood on the horizon. Ithaca New York. We walk the bridge over the gorge where the flow of water, like many things, is well above average. Climb the hill, cross the street, family strolling, tree lined, ho plaza, where a smooth trajectory of cobblestones rises to the stone clock tower. Christine tosses her hair, places right foot forward, lowers chin tilting head slightly, and smiles with a confidence that four long, hard years in one of the university's most rigorous majors engenders. Four cords dangle down the front of her black gown with red sash. Blue and white for chemical engineering. Double yellow for magna cum laude. Silver for general project teams. Red, black, and white for chemi car. Twists of color because life is braided, right? Think double helix with its interconnected strands rising like a staircase. So I climb this staircase to the top of the stone tower with panoramic views of Cornell, Ithaca, Lake Cayuga, and beyond. I can see the past. Not that far away, when Christine danced in diapers with mom, played piano in grade school, creating an elaborate three-by-four storyboard of the Titanic complete with three-foot model. And we know how that story goes. 
at Ancello in middle school, where she qualified for the eighth grade class in accelerated math, which troubled us. It's just too much, a bridge too far. Our little girl boarding the bus with a backpack already overburdened with binders and books. But she begged, please, please, I know I can do it, please. So we relented. And now comes high school, awakening on some nights after midnight to use the bathroom, light seeping between cracks around her door, which we watch, we monitor, evaluating risks. And down the river of time we go through the white water of adolescence, rapids and rocks, helmets and vests, currents of hormones with undertoes of gossip until the river widens senior year. President of her dance company, president of Signifer for the School Honor Society, traveling to Lake Tahoe where her entrepreneurship team wins the No Barriers Wells Fargo 2018 Global Impact Challenge until finally she opens the letter for early decision. Hey, Dad, you ready? We need some good picks. Give me just a second. Almost. Okay, honey, let it rip. She looks around the crowded plaza as if surprised by this moment, a young lifetime and coming, and throws her graduation cap high into cloudless sky. Surprise derives from the old French to overtake or invade, and Latin superprendere, which means to grasp or seize. Serengeti, Tanzania. The lions rest on the ground in the shade of umbrella acacia. Dry wind bends the grass and pushes the water. A family of elephants grazes nearby, swinging graceful trunks across the sward, where the only sound heard is the grass bristling as they pull it from the ground and bring it to an open mouth. I turn binoculars on a herd of gazelle huddled together, its members facing all directions. Because the leopard hanging in the branches may soon leave the sausage tree, and once on the ground, survey terrain and pat into the bush with a nonchalance that belies its empty belly. But here the two lions roll in midday blaze. The underside of the female is red with fresh blood. The male looks up, clings his eyes with scars and flies about his face and stares past the tourists and jeeps with a steeliness that says, I am king. Fear nothing, will hunt again soon when hunger returns, and where the grass grows high on big savanna, I move with slow, silent patience, stalking prey ever closer, waiting for time to chase and kill. Hastings on Hudson, New York. We know teachers touch the future. Michael was a sophomore in high school when his teacher showed slides for Peace Corps service in Nepal. Christine's connection with the chemistry teacher helped her score 100% on the regents. 
My thesis advisor explored how the Roman philosopher Quintilian understood the order as a good man skilled in speaking, where the requisite for mastering skill is goodness. Something I contemplate four decades later is our republic falters in its climb. Yet, sometimes the future also touches teachers. Ava was studying education in college when two things converged. The government passed legislation in 1975 mandating public education for all handicapped children and then attracted teachers of special education by forgiving their student loans. Born a teacher, she couldn't wait to get her own class. Now standing at the podium, under the large white tent on the golf course, 41 years later, She describes how dresses and pumps gave way to pants and flats, Chevys to BMWs, and chalkboards to smartboards, all the time figuring out how the kids think, breaking down curriculum, daily focus, relentless attention, small manageable steps, With accountability, you're in high school, adulting just over the hill. And in private conversation, stories about parents who blame teachers, administrators who soft-shoe hard issues, and colleagues who resemble all the animals in a circus like any workplace, describing the acronyms for regulations tumbling from Albany this warm June day. She breaks into rap with its slanted rhythms and percussive language, and surprised colleagues applaud. But the stories with the greatest gravitational tug on her heart always featured kids, The surprising things they said, flashes of uncorrupted spirit, tender moments of vulnerability, small flames of talent that could light their way, the promise of things to come. How many thousands did you teach? How many hundreds did you reach? How many did you redirect at the crossroads of a delicate age that leads to a different place a lifetime later? These stories more remarkable for the challenges I watched you endure from the sidelines as if life's perversity were testing your mettle. But you excel, my love, and leave the field of play triumphant. Your passion, grit, and grace with teaching, a legacy for living that inspires. And if words be true, when teachers breathe in this way, now comes the future. Profound derives from the Latin profundus, which means bottom or foundation. Chungu Zambia. Michael boils water with charcoal and brazier, and I carry the warm bucket to the brick outhouse. One side pit toilet teeming with black flies and the other for bathing. I remove clothing covered in dust 
and stand naked with a large fireball sun setting over fields barren and stubby since the corn was harvested in May. Which explains the government truck pulling into the school yesterday where students unloaded many dozen heavy bags of maize which the teachers cook in large cauldrons until the white pellets are soft. Then at noon the children line up by grade and Michael reaches down and fills a cup and pours it into whatever the kids have. Discarded plastic bags, school packs, pockets on uniforms, one girl reaching the front of the line with nothing simply lifts the hem of her dress until the boiling water runs away like our hearts at this spectacle. And during class, Michael uses Hangman to teach English. Ave reads books for which the native tongue has no word. And I play call and response with a tall African drum. Because compulsory education begins at seven. So we discuss the dilemma, walking the one-mile dirt road back to Michael's hut. Where do you start? One group teaching to a test few can pass. The other teaching to where the kids are, but criticize for diluting curriculum. Along the way, stopping by an open pit mid-afternoon, where some men are digging down and deep into wet mud. Others carrying the buckets to wooden molds, where a third group makes bricks that will harden on the ground in the strong sun. Because the Peace Corps volunteer is building a library, and each section of the village must contribute. We love Michael. He is our brother. The white guy talking Chitanga on the dirt road past compounds where people wave from the shade. Mapona Booty, past the community water pump, past the cows and goats, chickens and dogs, and the dung decaying on the ground until it rises as a fine dry dirt that permeates everything in this world as you ride this wave of heat from the cool of sunrise through midday blaze that renders the bucket bath at sunset a profound cleansing experience. We join the host family for dinner. They bring us wooden chairs from their huts. The family sits on the ground. Twilight, dusk, gloom, darkness. I leave the headlamp in my pocket. Michael whispers that your eyes adjust. Never in all my life have I enjoyed food with such absence of all things material. I lean back in my chair. The Milky Way swishes in a sky of luminous stars. Before moon breaks horizon, I am weary with hollow bones from four weeks of travel. Yes, and do not expect to sleep well besides my wife in the tiny bed with sandy blankets and mosquito netting, but somehow feel elevated and alive. And my God, 
heaven, just never seen so much burning light. Ithaca, New York. Words matter, and it's the wrong one. Expunge it now while there's still time. Retired to rise from the 16th century French retiri, which means to withdraw to a place of safety or seclusion. When was this madness sanctioned? What do you do? I'm retired. What did you do before? Oh, that's interesting. And what do you do now? Well, I'm putting my estate in order so when I die any day, my kids will inherit what I've spent my entire earthly existence accumulating. Yeah, me too. But it is what it is. Hey, can you pass the ketchup? Some years ago, I refurbished some old shutters in the garage and found two left-sided. So I hung one upside down in my father's memory. Dad wrote a book entitled Living Right Side Up in an Upside Down World. Boy, would he rant today in this crazy time. Maybe the next generation can get it right. Because just days before Christmas, we attended Christine's graduation for her Master of Engineering from Cornell University. It's called commencement. Commence sources again from the French meaning to begin, to start. She plans to travel to Zambia and live with her brother in the rural bush for three months. During the rainy season, eat shima, pump water, teach at school, and watch the corn grow high. Afterwards, maybe visit some friends in Europe, then start her job in chemical engineering for a Fortune 30 company in Boston. You raise your kids. You tell them stories at dinner. You teach them what you can as parents, but what they learn from you goes way beyond, and how it surpasses where we started astounds and humbles us. Kindness, humility, love, courage, world, vision, writ. So we thank our kids because words matter and it's the right one to start, initiate, cause to begin. Like when the wheels lift from the tarmac and your heart throttles for new country. I don't know about you, my friend, but I'm commencing with prayer that damn thing doesn't crash before reaching the promised land. Kilimanjaro, Tanzania. My right cheek swells with infected tooth. Lower lip dark red, white and scabby from sun poisoning. Days of constipation, and I didn't sleep again last night. I'm a graveyard with tombstones. By any calculation, should be dead. Maybe I am, and this is afterlife. Because I was fully dressed in layers when the killie fighter came to my tent with his headlamp at 3.30. Stop thinking. Bad idea. Filter any logic. Nothing makes sense. Got no business climbing 19,341 feet. Disabused about aging. On my knees at 65. 
Too late now, Charlie. Just going to dig. Whatever hard becomes, don't give a shit. Days past exhausted, just going to dig. Dig as far as I have to go, not stopping. No way, man. Whatever it takes, crawling inside along the edge. Don't even know how deep it goes. Hope I don't find out. Outside my tent, I see the headlamp of hikers who left at midnight, several thousand feet above our camp. A vertical line of light along an ominous black ridge. Poly, poly, slowly, slowly, Moses sets the pace. Mama Simba next, then Papa Simba, Christine and Michael, Logan, and two other killy fighters behind. Arctic cold and terminal dark. Only thing illuminated in my tiny circle of light is Ave's boot shuffling volcanic ash. One step, then another. Air's thin, pulse high, breathing fast. Reptilian brain pump thy animal harsh. Right side, stick, lift, and push. Left side, stick, lift, and push. Don't stop. Keep moving.